Hello, friends. Welcome to Level Up with Debbie Neal. I am your host. There is nowhere I would rather be than right here, right now with you. This podcast is all about leveling up in all aspects of our lives. Thank you for being here. I am so grateful. I'm excited to be on this journey with you. Together, we are leveling up. You ready? Hello, my beautiful Level Up family. Have I told you all lately how grateful I am that you are here and how very much I love being on this journey with you? Thank you. So last week, we went over the eight undeniable qualities of a winner and developing the champion within you. You are all champions and the next level winner is ready to come out. Today, we're going to dive into feelings. And so feelings is the major part of the law of attraction. You all know that this is my love language, the power and the secret. And all of the personal growth books attached to the law of attraction are my power. They're my passion. This is a part of the power and the law of attraction that is so important. In fact, you guys, it's everything. What we feel Our feelings are creating our life. Every person in our lives, we have an opportunity to give love to or not give love to, okay? I don't remember if this is coming from the secret or the power, but it's definitely like Rhonda Byrne like instilled this in me. Every time we meet someone, we have the opportunity to give love or not to give love, whether they deserve it or we feel they deserve it or not, I should say, because they do. What we give is what we get. So my new thing, okay, and this is inspired by another book called The Millionaire of Nazareth. Live each day like Jesus is by your side, watching your every single move and hearing your every single word. And so why I love this, okay, is because sometimes we feel we're justified in things that we say or things that we do because maybe something was done to us. But You know, that phrase I even want to use loosely because I believe everything's done for us as an opportunity to rise and be better. But I view it as like Jesus was right there because if he was there, would I be able to justify my actions, my words, my behavior? So some examples, if someone isn't kind, right, it's really easy not to give love. They weren't kind to me. They weren't nice to me. If someone is rude, it's easy not to give love. Why? Because we feel justified to to not give love to this person. They were rude to us. If someone talks about you, right, it's easy not to give love. Like they talked about us. Why should we be giving them love? If someone is ungrateful, it's easy not to give love, right? They, they're they ungrateful. They should appreciate me. Look at all I've done. But here's the thing. Give love always to others, even the ones who may appear like they don't deserve it or deserve it the least. And I was really inspired by this always, but even more so inspired. I read all of Bob Goff's books this summer. And so he really brought something out in me like, oh my gosh, like Jesus doesn't judge. He forgives everyone. We are the law of attraction. When we judge others, right? Whatever words are coming out of our mouth, we're judging ourself. We all have God inside of us. And I believe some of the people that deserve it the least, right? So maybe they were extra rude or really not nice or cold to you, or maybe spoke about you or whatever the case is. So whatever your beliefs are fine. Okay. I'm talking about me, but I believe that It's the people that deserve it the least because I kind of view it as like that's God in disguise and he wants to see how I'm going to treat him when he doesn't deserve it because it's all about forgiveness and being whole and treating everybody with love and what we're putting out, we're getting back. So give love to others through your kindness, through your encouragement, through your support, through your gratitude or any good feeling. Any good feeling and all good feelings come back to you multiplied. So look for things you love in a relationship more than the negative things. And you guys, oh my gosh, we could do a whole episode on this. And so 
I'm a woman. I want to say women do this more than men, but I could be wrong. But sometimes we're like nitpick and we're like, you could have done this better. You could have done that better. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. And all of a sudden it will appear like all of those things are going to be magnified in the relationship. But when we notice the love, when we notice the good, when we notice all of the amazing things somebody else brings to the table, all of a sudden it's going to appear as if something magical happened to the other person person, right? And we've all done this, but it's not that anything happened magical to the other person. We just chose to bring out the magic in the other person by recognizing and appreciating and loving all of the good things and love melts away the bad stuff. So trying to change someone isn't giving love. The same way we focus on positive to remove energy. So I love this analogy, right? So there's water in a glass, And we've all heard, do you see the glass is half full or half empty, right? We know that, but that's not what I'm talking about here. So there's water in a glass and the glass is half full and you want it to be full. You don't want it to be half empty. So maybe like you're thirsty, you want more water. So you're not going to sit there and focus on the emptiness leaving the glass, right? And let's represent that as the negative. You're going to put more water in the glass, because you want it full, right? You're not forcing the empty space out. So the same thing, take that same analogy when we're feeling negative about a situation or or we're, we're noticing somebody's flaws. We're focusing on the lack, the water that's missing. We don't force it out. We just add more love. We add more love to fill that space. We focus on what we love and it will overpower what we don't love. So when we criticize, when we blame, when we complain, when we nag, when we find faults in another, we aren't giving love. So how about this? How about this, my level up friends? Let's do this together. Like, let's really end this. No more complaining, only praising. Look for good in other people. Look for things that people are doing right. Look for things that you appreciate. Like, it's almost like, well, Easter just passed. Easter was yesterday. It's like being on an Easter egg hunt. Well, when you guys are listening to this, Easter wasn't yesterday. But today, for me, Easter was yesterday because I record these in advance. So I don't want you to get confused. But imagine like you're on that Easter egg hunt. You're looking for those eggs and they're just filled with love and positivity and appreciation. So just start by only praising, only blessing. So often in life, we're looking to another person to make us happy. And that's that's an inside job. You know, we have to be happy to receive happy versions of other people. And actually, we're going to do a whole episode on that. The force of love presents you with a whole array of personal emotional trainers. Okay, I love this. So you, you could refer to them as pets. But I never do because pets to me is they're like furry and whatever. Personal emotional trainers. So people are put in your life. They're disguised as everyday people. And we're going to come across so many of them in our lives. And they are there to train you, to train us to choose love. So let me give you some examples. In fact, I'm going to talk about a personal example, okay? This summer, I grew through something. Okay. And so whenever we're growing to the next level of us, that is in life when things are going to show up. They're going to be like, oh my gosh, maybe it's a sign that we're not ready for the next level. No, it's actually a sign that you are completely on the right path because in order to grow to the next level, we need to grow to the next level, right? So it's going to show up in different areas of your life. So this summer I grew through something and you guys growing through something is painful, it hurts. And I have to admit, I was mad. So it's not like an emotion that we talk about love, what I speak on, but I'm human too. And so when we feel these emotions, we work through them. So I was mad, okay? And the person that I was mad at was labeled or I labeled as a hater, right? We all have haters in our lives. But you know what? It wasn't a hater. It wasn't a hater. And it took me time to realize that it was God presenting me. In fact, I was like, oh my gosh, the devil shows up. The devil shows up. It wasn't the devil. It was God presenting me with a personal emotional trainer to ask me to choose love. Like he's saying, Deb, if you really love your vision, if you love what you're going for, if you love what you're creating, if you really feel this amount of love and belief, I'm going to, I'm going to add some personal emotional trainers and I'm going to ask you to prove yourself. 
Are you worthy of this? And you guys, once I got that aha moment, I'd spend days filling myself up with love. And that's why we say personal growth, success, success is not, oh my gosh, let me wake up, plug in my coffee and I'm successful. No matter what you do for a living, it is a lifelong commitment of personal growth, discovery, growing pains, all of it. So I spend days filling up myself with love, all the things in my love in my life. So it was like I was giving my my mind a love antidote, whatever you call it, like this this transfusion going through my body to remove these feelings. And the, the only way they could be removed is replace them with love. So I thought about all the things I love in my life. I, I journaled it. I spoke about it. I thought about it. I thought about my vision that I love until it brought me to tears. I thought about my business that I love. I thought about the leaders that I do life with that I love. I focused on the love, deep love I have for speaking and for training, and I prayed on it. And you guys, one of the things that emerged from this summer was this podcast. This podcast was my summer love child. This this podcast was born born out of love. That wasn't my intention when I went into this deep filling myself up with love, but it was one of the things that came out, right? So once I focused on love, the anger went away. Love always wins. It always does, but it does take a deliberate decision on our parts to really self-love, kind of self-medicate yourself with love. I love breathing life into others. I love reaching into the hearts and the souls of others and helping them tap into their God-given potential. My voice was meant to reach more. I want to touch as many amazing people like you as humanly possible. And haters, no matter what they represent in your life, aren't in our lives to hate, okay? They are hurting and hurt people hurt. They are in our lives to allow us the power to choose love no matter what. You guys, it is so easy to live in that moment and be angry and be upset and feel justified and feel entitled. But that's not growing us. It's holding us back from our greatness. We have the power to stick everything we love and want to us, literally stick it to us. But looking for the things you love in others by looking for the things you love in others, looking for their good, saying yes to those qualities about them that you love. Here's the thing. You can't talk about or hear negativity and have good feelings at the same time. Like they don't go hand in hand. It takes love to choose the higher road. It takes strength to be the difference in a conversation. It's so easy to join in knowing that the conversation is not right, knowing that it's not good, knowing that it's about someone else. And you're sitting there and I've done it. We've all done it knowing this doesn't feel good. Be the difference. Stand up. Put your feet in that ground and be so committed to kindness that you're going to be the difference in the conversation or you're out of there. Because here's the thing. People will not gossip around you if they know you do not participate. So if people are gossiping around you, feedback. They know it's allowed. They know it's okay. Negative people surround themselves with negative people. So quite honestly, they can feel free to continue to bitch. Okay. So life is always presenting us with people and circumstances so we can choose what we love and what we don't love, right? Every conversation, every opportunity to be negative or speak poorly or join thinking or a conversation that doesn't work for us, we are consciously making that choice. When we react, we are reacting with our feelings and we are choosing those feelings. You cannot change a negative situation with bad feelings. When we react negatively, our bad feelings multiply. It's like a germ fest of negativity, okay? We all attempt to justify why, right? Why we have the right to reach negative, but but that's our choice, how we react. It is our choice when we feel feel fantastic, when we feel amazing, guess what we're doing? We are creating a magnetic field around us that no negativity can penetrate. Like I like to view it like, I don't know if you guys remember Pigpen, 
and he had like this cloud of dirt around him. I focused every single day. So I don't have a cloud of dirt around me. Okay. But I focused every day on building this white, magical, bright light with like some silver in there and bling and rhinestones because anything that bling, I love. And it surrounds me. And my job, my mission is to keep adding to it adding to it, more bling, more clear, more white, more light. And, and our love just replenishes it. It's life work, life work. We do this for our life. And you guys, here's the thing. It works. It allows us to find love in everything. When we change the way we feel by changing our feelings, the outside world changes. And so many people think the opposite. Well, when the outside world or the circumstances or the people appear better, I will show up better. And that's not what it's about. In fact, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. In order for us to become different, in order for us to level up, it's about being different. It's about changing. It's about evolving. And you know what? You might separate yourself from people in life. You might. That's the reality. And so you need to be okay with that because the positive people, the loving people, the people that want to live like you do will conform, adjust, and grow with you. So how are you feeling? Let me ask you some questions, okay? How are you feeling about your success? And so I'm stressing the word feeling because that's your blueprint. That's what's driving your bus. That's what's moving you forward or not forward. How are you feeling about your current success? How Are you feeling joy? Are you feeling gratitude? Are you feeling excitement? Or are you feeling, you know what? I'm not really happy with where I am. But here's the good news to that. When you are no longer willing to accept your current circumstances, you're going to make a change, right? So how are you feeling about your goals? Like, do they excite you? Do they move you? Do they inspire you? Are you taking action every day? Are you telling people about them? Are you, do you literally feel like getting a billboard with your name on it and letting everybody know how excited you are? How are you feeling about where you will be in life in three months at year end? Because here's the thing, the more we give love, and feel good, the more magnetic our field becomes and the more it expands. So with mine, it's white, it's silver, it's bling, it has rhinestones. I've got this awesome field surrounding me. And you know what? It's like love only. If you don't want to love, if you don't want to grow, if you don't want to be positive, if you don't want to be kind, I'm here to be the difference, but I am loving you from a distance. Okay. You are not coming in my circle of bling. Okay. So draw everything and everyone you love to you with this magnetic force you're giving out. Our feelings have the power over our health. You know, our body, like it's energy, it's moving. If you look at it under the microscope, we're not solid, we're moving, we're fluid. So what you give your body through strong feelings and beliefs, you receive in your body. So every feeling we have saturates every cell in our body. Every feeling we have saturates every cell and every organ. So what do you speak into your body? Like, what do you hear? are where affirmations are huge. So I am healthy. I am beautiful. I am strong. I am lean. I am sexy. That's my favorite one. Okay. I'm turning 50 this year and I'm keeping sexy for as long as I'm on this earth. Right. So, but we too often criticize and that's not giving love, right? We say things like, I am fat. I am out of shape. I am tired. I am old. And you know what? Your body hears you. And so it will become, right? Whenever I hear myself or catch myself, because we all do it, you guys, okay? And this is why personal growth, this is why the law of attraction is so important to not just read, but to study, to become a student of, to live by it. Because every day, minimum, there's one or many times where I'm like, Deb, reel yourself back in. Reel yourself back in, put on the secret, put on the power, read a book, journal, firm, get your stuff together, okay? So whenever I hear myself or catch myself, I think, uh, like if I'm speaking into myself words that don't really serve me, how would I want my kids to feel about that? How would I want my kids to speak to themselves? How would I want my kids to feel about their health and their body? I'm the example and my feelings have power. And that immediately switches it to love because why? It's not really about me. I mean, it is, but 
what we do has the power to impact others. Anytime we are feeling love and gratitude, we are feeding ourselves love and love expands. Gratitude is the greatest multiplier. So say thank you every single day for your health. That's something that so many of us take for granted. Say thank you with feeling for all you love about your body and ignore what you don't love. So the same thing applies as we spoke about earlier with the glass, right? Don't focus on what's missing. Don't focus on what you don't love. Just keep feeling the love that you do have, and that's going to take over. When we face illness, multiply your love of health. Thank you, God, for my perfect health. Feel the gratitude. When you see people that are healthy, it's easy to think, why me, and and resent their health. The universe is asking you to choose love. Feel the health they have and love it as if it was yours. Do things that make you happy. Give love for the perfect weight, the perfect body, the perfect health of an organ. Imagine having it. Feel utterly grateful. Age is an illusion. When we speak about getting old, feeling old, guess what? We look and feel old. It's a mindset. Positive people feel younger. We have the power to change our body into anything we want through love and gratitude. Our feelings are our power. We are so powerful. We are the power. We hold the power. Everything has a frequency. And what Whatever you are feeling, you are attracting things on that very same frequency. Life is responding to you. Life is communicating with you. When we are feeling happy, when we are feeling love, only happy people and circumstances have the power to enter our life. There are no accidents in life. It's the physics of life and the law of attraction in action. Place the force of love ahead of you in every single thing that you do. Wake up every day and imagine your day going amazing, amazing. And I know my day today, I had so many things on my plate. And you know, I look right now, all gratitude, recording two episodes, all gratitude, okay? Packing to go away tomorrow, all gratitude. Running meetings tonight for a business that I love, all gratitude. And and I got overwhelmed for a bit. And all I just kept saying is today is going to be amazing. It's going to be mind blowing. And so it's shifting that energy, create your day in your mind, have mental pictures, feel love inside of you as much as you can before you do anything. Allow love and the feelings of love to guide you, to lead you in every single aspect of your life. Your feelings have the power over your life. And you guys, we're here forever. Like we don't go away. We're spiritual beings. We are eternal. We have always existed and we always will. Our mission is to actually like find heaven on earth, like to actually live our very best life. The greatest joy on earth is giving. It's giving. Unless you give, Here's the reality. You will always be struggling to survive. So it's giving things like your love, your joy, your positivity, your excitement, your gratitude, and your passion are true and everlasting. They are priceless. Give your love. Increase the power of your magnetic force every single day. Give love because it is the magnet of every single thing you desire, your success, your health, your relationships, your happiness, your joy. Every time you choose love, every time you choose positive, every time you choose compassion, every time you choose kindness, you are lighting up the world. You guys, I am so obsessed about the law of attraction. I have from the very minute I learned about it in 2006. I just love it. And on a personal note, I want to share a story with you guys because we're family here, right? And and I'm excited. So when 2020 began, I prayed for the next level, right? And I and I kind of shared a little bit with you, a little bit of uh, emotional stuff I went through this summer. And for a brief moment, I felt derailed. And you know what? Here's the thing: that's part of leveling up. 
when we are feeling derailed, the universe is setting us up to level up. And for a brief moment, I really did. I wanted so badly to feel negative. And again, I felt justified. We have all been there in business, in our personal lives, in relationships. We've all been there. And again, I went on love overload. All of the things that I love, I made lists. I filled journals. I felt them with all of my heart. And one of the things on my dream board, I made a dream board that when I looked at it, it kind of wiped out anything that I was feeling that didn't serve me. It was like, it was like a preview to my life. It it made me dream. It made me feel excited. It made me feel love. And for the last few years on my dream board has been a second home, a vacation home. And so when I look at all of the pics All I did was feel love, like pure joy and love. I felt the love of the memories that were going to be created. I felt the love of my family there. I felt the love of my friends there. I felt the love of my leaders there. I love Palm Beach. And when I'm there, I'm in complete joy. And so I was there visiting about a month ago. And I believe things just happen for a reason, okay? And I was supposed to meet my friend Tiffany for lunch at 2 o'clock on whatever day it was. And at about 11.30, she texts me and said, you know, Deb, something came up. Her decorator was coming over, and we have to do it a different day. And of course, first of all, anybody who knows me, I was already starving at 11.30. So I was like, no worries. I love you. I'll talk to you later. And on a whim, you know, there are no coincidences. The universe is always guiding us. My friend Sharon, so like drive around, look at homes. My friend Sharon sent me a picture and there was this amazing house and it was on the market for two hours at that point. And so I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And I clicked on the link and it allowed you to click like, if you're interested, click here. Okay. So within seconds, several texts and emails came in. Are you interested? We could show you the house. And I was like, yeah, you know, actually would love to see the house here now, you know, around the corner. Is it possible to see it? And people like, you know, no, we can make an appointment. I mean, we're, you know, COVID's going on too. So I understand, you know, and and basically it was like, how's next week? How's in two days? Well, it wasn't like I was leaving, but there was one person one person who who was in my life for a reason. And he said, I'm going to turn around. I'll show it to you. As I was waiting for the realtor to pull up, I was looking at the listing and I was scrolling through the pictures of the houses and the house was just like perfect. It was exactly what I was looking for. My only thought was, hmm, well, ideally I would have loved it to have four bedrooms. It has three bedrooms. It's a second home. I could make it work, but ideally would have loved four, but it looked so beautiful. Again, I was thinking I can make this work. So next the realtor pulls up and he pulls up in a white Mercedes. So anybody who knows me, let's just say that car has special meaning to me. Okay. So I was like, yes, universe has given me a sign. You're on the right track, Deb, trust the process. So as we walked up to the house, he then said to me, oh, by the way, Okay, I, I don't know if this happens normally. By the way, the house was listed as a three-bedroom home, but it's actually a four-bedroom home. <laughs> of course it is. Literally perfect. So I was in the foyer. I knew this is mine. This is mine. So there was 11 offers, but you know what? There was this calmness. There was no fear. There was no worry because here's the thing. The universe is always working out for our highest and best good. So I knew in my heart, this was my house, but if for some reason it wasn't, there would be something better along the way. All I focused on was my love for the house, the memories that would be created in the house. I felt the love to the core of my being. I released the other offers. It wasn't about that. That was between the universe and those offers. I released what could go wrong and I only felt love. So I'm very excited to share with you guys that this is my house. We closed on March 29th. I'm actually getting on a plane tomorrow to go spend two weeks there. And here's the thing. God had a plan. When what we feel matters, what we feel we attract, we are going to spend a lot of time talking about the law of attraction. Honestly, we can do hundreds of episodes and still not scratch the surface of its power. One of my missions is for you to live a magical life, for all of us to live a magical life, to create a magical life through our thoughts and our feelings. And I am having a blast doing this podcast with you. Like, I'm so grateful that this podcast was born out of this summer. I, I've been loving the law of attraction for the last 15 years. And one of the things that I'd love from you is share with me some of the things that you're manifesting. Share with me things that you have attracted in your life using the law of your feelings. And so if you share it on my Instagram, I'm going to share it. 
I want everybody, like, it's like we're feeding off of that. And I'm level up, Dot Debbie Neal, right? And I love your comments and your reviews on Apple. So please keep them coming. So first, of course, you know, when, when I read them, my heart is so warm and I'm so grateful, but even more than that, others read them. And so your reviews are going to attract others to join our level up community, our family, and imagine the love that we can create together, getting everyone on our frequency, right? The more you like, the more you subscribe and you leave positive messages, the more people this podcast is going to touch. And that's my big love goal to get as many people on this frequency as humanly possible. So I am loving my time with you guys. Next week, we're going to be talking about faith and effort. And I'm a true believer in the law of attraction. I believe our feelings create our life, but here's the key. Feelings, then the goal is to turn into inspired action, which turns into effort. And average apply effort for a period of time until they get the job, until they get the promotion, until they get tired, until they hit an obstacle. And oh, my friends, there is no end when you're on a mission to level up your life. So I am psyched for this topic. Have an amazing week. Love you all. Talk to you Monday.